you ready? A guten chodesh. Oh, Avi. Surprise, surprise. Shalom Aleichem, Avi Mendelbel. All the way from, that's why he's not on Zoom today. If you're wondering, how come the top left corner? In honor, today's share is being sponsored. In honor of Ita Sima Basra Moshe Shmuel on the occasion of her birthday. I love this one. This is a, a birthday and in honor of Eishas Chayel. It's Kishmak. We're grateful to Akash Baruch for giving her a Rafu Shlema from COVID-19. May mom and dad an active MDY DAF participant be zoichet to many more years of DAFim together. Be gesund. Amen. From her children. Zamor Monsi, Kaufman, Yerushalayim, Cantors, Clifton, and in honor of Maisha's Chayel on our 17th anniversary. So it should become a, uh, a standard. Honoring wives, very good. People are picking it up. From Avram M. Farkovich. Farkovich, Farkovich. All right, Yishkoyach. This I should have read yesterday. Today's shir is sponsored in honor of Lurifus Yecheskel Ben Leo. Okay, another four. Thank you for the nice compliments when you announced my 39 Malacha video last time. This comes from a Rebbe Choshev Hadras Panem from Houston, Texas, Eliezer Kessler. So he had a very nice video that he made. I mentioned it. This, um, this one that he sent me, I couldn't get onto. We're about to begin Perika Oireg. I wanted to once again share the video so that people could understand the process better. Here's the link. If you have the link, the loom begins at minute 18. My wife was inspired by the, daf, by the yoimi of the daf yoimi. Our Rav spoke about learning every day and making kfi. She decided she's going to learn Tanakh yoimi, learning eight to ten psukim a day. She then sends out a five-minute WhatsApp audio few nice things in those psukim. She's about, she has about 200 listeners. As you can imagine, listen, you just have to advertise on Yeshiva World News, you get up to 15,000. It's not a problem. As you can imagine, it takes hours and hours of work. I can imagine. They hope to finish in seven years with Daf Yoimi. <laughs> He's loving it. This Sunday, they're making a seum on Sefer Bereshis. That was yesterday. So Mazel Tov on the seum of Sefer, Sefer Bereshis. She plans on quoting you that the main thing is the yoimi. Please wish her in her chabura mazel tov as she's an avid listener of the emails. <laughs> I love the email listeners. They pad those numbers. You go onto YouTube, it says 400. It's really 200 plus 200. Just listen to the emails. While I'm writing, no, those are not the real numbers. Don't get nervous. We have, uh, it's about 2,500 Baruch Hashem today. While I'm writing, by the way, there's a hundred on YouTube that don't come up because we have a different, it's two YouTubes. The first two hours is one, about a hundred people. Then when you erase that, put on another link. While I'm writing, I want to apologize for the Musa I gave. Okay, fine, that's not Nagea. Weiter, you gave me Musa, I have no idea what he's talking about. But I'm Michael, you a thousand percent. Oh, that I shouldn't take a vacation? That was a joke, that was a Musa. Of course I don't take vacations. Okay, anyways, we'll read all these a different time. We are holding on Dav. Today's daf kuf ches, kuf zayin amud beis, all the way in the bottom. Omar, mar, bar, oh, well, you got to fasten your seatbelts because there's a lot of words here, just to say it. I'm thinking about, like, I think we should probably start the shir. To <laughs> here, face that camera so the people on Zoom see what's going on. All right, way to start off the shir, I guess. We need some sort of milsa de bdichusa. Get in the mood. <laughs> it's great. Listen, Kalakavod, she's, she's the wife of a, of a Rebbe, Chosh of a guy. You should see the video. Period. The whole zap. Omar bar Hamadoiri Omar Shmuel. Hoysha Yodel Yemea Behema Vidildel Uber Shibimea. A person dislocated the fetus with inside the animal. And because of that, the animal. Miscarried, a live animal. Chayav. My taima, Omar Rava, Baram Doiri, Azburli. Baram Doiri explained it to me. 
Lav Omer Rav Sheish is high man the Talash Kishusa Mehizme Vihige. Not exactly sure what it is, something like this. These are the hops, and these are the, uh, what do you call them? And um, the bramble. So the hops and the bramble, Shusa Vihizme, they, they sort of grow within each other, but not from the ground. So if you, I love when people send me like two days later after the shear is way over. A guy sent me yesterday. It was great. I watched it. It was amazing. From Dafa Chaimi, uh, there's a beautiful explanation of Shtei Batanir and Ve'echad Benir. Like the two and the one. What was the one? I know the two. I didn't understand the one. And the beautiful video. Explain, but it was two days late. Somebody's going to send me tomorrow. Shusa Ve'higmi means this and this. Fine. But anyways, uh, this is just again for entertainment purposes. Some two things that are growing together, and you, you grab one off the other, you take the, the hops, you know, you make beer out of this stuff, right? You take the hops off the berries, now you're medal, you're, you're, even though it's not attached to the ground, these hops, they're just growing like a, like a mushroom grows on a, on a tree. The, these hops grow on these berries, and you pull them off. It's, this is the natural way that they grow, as the Gemara is going to explain soon. Now, typically, would be kaitzer, toilash, that kind of thing. So that's, I've seen even someone say that Yechayev, because of goizes, Yaakov, come on in. Shkoyach for coming again. Goizes, sharing. Omar Abaya. Hayman de tolash pitro meuno de chatzba. Take off uh, some sort of mushroom, a fungus. May uno de chatzba from the handle of a pail of a pitcher. Mechayev mishum oikir dove migiduloi. Again, uh, the, the mushroom is not growing, it doesn't have roots, it's not in the ground, but it grows on top of this thing. It's mildew, fung, whatever it is, you're removing it from where it grows. Mosav Rishaya ha toilash mi otzit snokov chayev. If you remove a fruit from a a pot that has holes in it, perforated pot, chayav, v'she'en inokov, potter. In other words, you are potter. Why are you potter? We had a whole sugi about us. It's nokov. You're potter because it's not attached to the ground. So you see that it has to be attached to the ground. So how come if you remove a mushroom, you're chayav? It's not attached to the ground. How come if you remove an animal from the stomach? Chayav, it's not attached to the ground. Says the Gemara, hosom lav hainu revisei, hoch hainu revisei. It all depends on what the natural way of it growing is. It's not natural for an orange tree to grow in a pot, therefore you're not chayiv. But it's natural for fungus to grow on a handle. It's natural for an animal to grow in a stomach or for these hops to grow on these brambles. Chayiv oif. Now, up until now, we, we discussed the whole sugi yesterday about the Shmanish Ratzim. Do they have skin? Do they have thick skin? They have thick skin, certainly for Shabbos. Rabbonin agreed him on Shabbos. Maybe on, on, for Tumah they don't have thick skin. Now we're discussing Chayav Va'ayv. Omer Rav Huna. Tfilin al Gabe Or Shaloyv Tar. You could write Tfilin on chicken skin. Kishmak. Omer Rav Yosef. Maikam Ashlon. This they are. You want to... The Chiddush is that it's considered... Considered... Hide. It's considered leather. That you could write. It's cloth. Tanina, we learned this. If you, as we had yesterday, how do you do Chabala? How do you do? It's Rish Chodesh, obviously. That's why we're getting can't, treats. Rish Chodesh treats. It's your fault, Avi. There should have been like real treats here. He says it's your fault. Okay, I know. I don't need to run. Uh, bruising. How do you bruise? We said, obviously, the the blood cannot come out of the skin. Blood comes out of the skin. 100% awesome in the right. So that's, that is shoichet, uh, which is, it's until the shoma, which is shoichet. So we're talking about that the blood goes between the skin and the flesh. But that you have to have skin for that. You have to have thick skin. And we said that if you chayv on a bird, chayv. So obviously they have skin. No, there's a big chiddush here. Div mas nisin hava amino kivin izbei nikve nikve loi. Explains Rashi, since a bird has feathers, so it has a lot of holes, perforated skin. You look at its skin, you'll see like little holes in it. So I would think, you can't write tefillin on it. 
any hole that the, the surface just goes over it easily and he, he doesn't notice it, there's no big bump, it's not considered a hole. Meisvei, and that's the Chiddush. I could write on chicken skin even though it has a bunch of holes. Meisvei, Rabbi Zeira, Bichnafav. It says when you she say the, the the bird he rips it open. Bichnafav, lahachshir is ha'ar. You have rabbis. I have lahachshir. What do you guys have? Lahachshir. Your Gemara, bye bye. Shinantam, you gotta throw it out. It's missing a whole word. Listen, Yulishi Dasa, Nachman, Yulishi Dasa. You're missing one word, the you're not good. But the word is Larabis. It has to be Larabis because it's in his Gemara. Yeah. It's all our Gemara again says he, he must win. What? But anyways, you should say Larabis just in case it's, we're right and you're not yoyed to the, the whole, the whole shas. Fine, that what? That you, you take the skin of the oil, you put it on the mezbeach. If it's skin, if it's real hide, uh, a regular oil, an animal, you have to take off the skin. You don't put it on the mezbeach. What's the kasha? <laughs> yes, an animal, you don't put the skin on the, on the mezbeach, but this you do. Well, it's not a big raya. Some say the opposite, a different. She's bichnafav. The rabbis is our, the yimakir the 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 skin. Yeah, I'm just shleima or who how did this crawl the rabuye? It makes a lot of sense if it's considered skin. That's why I need a pasuk like Mila. It makes sense that if this thing should typically be aser, that's why the pasuk says it's not. El yamer slav or who, but if it's not considered skin, am I to crawl the rabuye? Why does the Torah have to come and tell you? Oh, you should put the skin on the mizbech. It's really not skin. The, the chicken skin, the, the, not the chicken, the, 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 the bird skin has small holes in it. So it's disgusting and a disgusting thing you don't put on the Mizbeach. Komash Malon, that you do. Take a piece of salmon, take the skin, and write a beautiful parish of tefillin for your son for his bar mitzvah. Let Eliyahu be come and tell us. Until then, oh, I get a treat too. Beautiful. Look, Reboi side is not stam. Eretz Yisrael chocolates. Milk like. Ah. Im Yove Eliyahu v'yoymar. Says the Gemara. My Im Yove Eliyahu v'yoymar. Points out. Wow. Wow. This is not the first time. Points out, Rashi. Who's that? Yeah, you was here the other day. What? Wow, you're not you're not paying attention, Yeshua. So, Imyov Elio means says Rashi, Elio Novi cannot change the halacha. Loy b'shemayimi, he can't come and say, oh, this is a halacha. He could tell us a fact. He could tell us something. What could he tell us? Ileima ide islei or ide leslei or whether the height of a a, a fish is it considered skin? Hachazina islei or. You just look at it, you see, it's a nice piece of skin. If you have a corpse in a room, it makes tumma, this tumma to anything else in the room. Now, if you have a mechitza, it provides protection from the tumma. So we say, now, if it's part of the fish, a fish, you take a, a salmon, put it in front of something, that something becomes tummy, the fish doesn't protect anything. If it's a piece of hide, it's a piece of skin, it's a wall. So if it's part of the fish, it's not going to provide a mechitza. But the fact that you're telling me that it provides a mechitza, that's telling me that it's separate of the fish and it's a piece of skin. So maybe you can write tefillin on it. Elo, so it can't be that. So that we know already. We know that halach. We don't need Elio. No, we for that. Elo, im yove Elio, v'yoymar, i paskazuam aminei, iloi paskazuam aminei. He'll tell us whether the, the smell, the stench, goes away. The Ran says, because it doesn't make sense either. So you check. You, you need Eliyahu and for that. You, you, every day you'll go and take a look and says the Gemara, says the Ran, it means a ruchni stench, a zuama, like a tumma kind of thing. That, does that go away? And then Eliyahu and could come and tell you. 
This is one of the saddest stories in Shas for Boy Sai. Shmuel Vikarno Haviyasva Guddha Dinar Malko. Shmuel and Karno sitting around, they were they were walking by the by the bank of Nahar Malka, the Euphrates. Shmuel notices that the water of the river is coming upwards and that it's dark in color, it's, it's, not, it's not clear. I'm telling you, this means that a godel is coming from Eretz Yisrael. But he has a problem, he's sick. Shmuel is a doctor. So he starts thinking about how he's going to heal this gadol. He says, Rashi, that the water was rising so that this gadol, who is relieving himself over the boat, should have a mechitza, should have protection for tzniyas. Zil tehelei akamkane. So he tells Karna, go smell him out. I want you to tell me, is he a true gadol? Karna was a professional wine smeller. So he just used it as a lotion. I want you to go figure out what's going on here. Who's this guy? Is he a real gadol or not? Am I onto something chashuv? Says the Gemara, Ozal Rav. No other than Rav. This is the great Rav that he met. In fact, it was a big gadol. And that's not a gadol. Gadol Adar Rav. Omerlei. So he starts fehering him. Kind of starts fehering Rav. Now at this point, Rav doesn't know he's in a feher. He thinks, a chash of a guy is asking him, Shiloh, how do you know that you can't write tefillin? How do you know that you only write tefillin on a kosher animal? Only something that you're allowed to eat physically could you write the tefillin on. Red like dam. So dam is red. All the colors are neither red. Rashi points out there's one color black, but that means it was red that used to be black. It, it was bl the black used to be red, is Niskaltel. How do you know you do Mila where we do Mila today? It could be other places of the body. It says Arla. By fruit, it also says Arla. Talking about something that's part of a rabba, and that's where the Mila is. It is? Yeah. The person takes from you. I'm, I get credit for that. What's you that get group? get credit for that person who teaches every day of Sukkot. Halavai, halavai. Halavai, from your mouth, from your mouth, halavai. Exactly. But not, not, to take, not to take away from her, so okay. But she got from you, so she got to pre Okay, shkoyach. Afkan dover shoyz a pre. Shkoyach. Put it in the email, please. She's listening. No, I want to read it. <laughs> Eim eliboy dechsev from all the way from Beit Shemesh Rivim fourteen. Eim eliboy spek the Gemara. Interesting question, and this is where Rav starts picking up that there's some funny business going on here. Eim eliboy, maybe you should open up the baby's chest when he's eight days old, take a piece of his heart out, and then uh, put it back. It doesn't mean literally that. Maybe it means you know a little of the skin over here or something. Look, it says in the passage, is arlas levavchem. It says mufurish. You should you should remove the arla of the heart. This makes a little bit more sense. Maybe from the ear. So he tells him very nicely. Donim arlasoi tamam arlasoi tama. It says arlasoi. Arlasoi doesn't need any extension. Doesn't need any explanation. Arlasoi. His arla. Which arla? I don't know. But arlasoi. The entire arla. When you say arlas. Arlas always goes with another word. Arlas levavai. Arlas oznoi. Arlas ragloi. But that itself is not enough to explain what's going on here. So it doesn't make sense to learn it out from a word that's only half explanation. I like the word arlasai, which explains it all. Donim arlasai tama, arlasai tama, donim arlasai tama, arlas she'eno tama. It's not a complete word, it's not a complete understanding. It comes with another word. Omar lei. My shmoch, Rav asks him, what's your name? Big mistake. He answered him. He said, Karna. Omalei. Ye Rabba, the tepuk le karna be'ene. You should have a horn that grows out of your eye, just like your name. Le And, in fact, that's what happened. He had a cataract in his eye. 
And we had it a few times that the name is Goyrim. It was another, I, I don't remember exactly where it was. It's like, what's your name? Shalom. Oh, blah, blah, blah. then it should be this and that. Based on the name, they said. Yeah. Oh, very good, very good. What's your name? And she said, Mason. And then he had to pay 200 because he ripped her. That was the lady he ripped her head. Think covering up. Very good. Yeah. Wow. Yaval, both on this side, two of them. She. But it's, yeah, we had a few times. Also with the man somewhere. I don't remember. Anyways, the Zikar. Got to do more Chazars. And uh, we all know Reb Chaim Kinevsky holds up the name Shira. Shira is uh, Shmokagarim. He does not like that name. My cousin is Shira and my neighbor is Shira. Yeah, anyway. Is Shmuel that person over there? Wow. Now, Menachem says that in Baba Basra, I thought that was Ra. Okay, very good, if that's the case. He says that Shmuel also cursed Karna. Yeah, I remember when we were learning Baba Basra, we had this child where he got cursed twice from the same eye. His two eyes had, uh, had a cataract. He... The poor guy, his name is his parents. <laughs> Shmuel Kagarim. Karna got cursed twice, once by Rav and once by Shmuel. L'soyf Aili Shmuel Abesei. Now this is the first time the famous Rav and Shmuel Machleg, this is the first time Shmuel sees Rav in his life. And he says, come to my house. He realizes that he's sick. And he takes him to his house. Oichle Nahamad Asari. He feeds him barley bread. V'chasa the harsana, the famous Kasa the harsana, the, the fish with the, with the, with the flour. The ashke shikra, it's a terrible, terrible mixture. You have barley bread and fish and beer. The ashke shikra, and guess what happened to his stomach? But he refused to give him a bathroom. He should have tremendous diarrhea. In other words, it should, it should cause everything just to, to be relieved and then his disease will go away. It's interesting that Shmuel felt, I guess it was part of the, the healing process, not to tell Rav, or maybe Rav wouldn't accept his healing. So he tried to sneak it in. He gave him this kind of thing, and then, by the way, I'm not giving you a bathroom. You'll have to figure it out. <laughs> to do this kind of thing? Let it go, let it go, and then, oh, wow. Anyways, Rav was not in a good mood. He already, he had with Karna, he's suffering from all the, the, the seasickness and this whole thing. And, and Karna's holding him up, not letting him go to the bathroom, asking him questions. Shmuel's doing his shtick. Laid Rav Omar, so he cursed. Man de mitzaron, the person that caused mitzar, le look bnei. He shouldn't have sons. V'chein hava. And he was cursed. And this is, it just says it like this, but this is, or you saw it for all of Shas, this line right over here, because of what happened here, Rav later on learned that Shmuel tried to help him, and he felt bad. He felt bad because of him. He never had boys. We know that Shmuel had girls, and one of them married Rava. You know the whole... So Rav always, even though Rav was older and more chashan than Shmuel, he constantly tried to give him the covet, more covet than himself. There's a, there a famous Gemara in Baba Kama that they, Rav Asi and, and Shmuel and Rav, they were going into a bris and they had a fight who should go first. Rav said, you go in. And, and there was a, another story with, a, with a, who's going to be the Rosh Hashiva in Bavel and Rav refused to take it. He gave it to Shmuel, even though he felt, because of the story. And what's very interesting to me is that Shmuel suffered three times such a story in Shas. And in very similar circumstances with, their, with his children. One time, the famous one is when Shmuel was not sensitive. His father said, Let's, there, was a, there were a couple of girls that were captured, Jewish girls, and Shmuel's father said, let's, let's put a shomer. So Shmuel says, why do they need a shomer? There were months with these goyim, what, another few hours, what's going to make a difference? And he said, would you say something like that about your daughters? And sure enough, Shmuel's daughter was captured in the famous Isigiyaira story, and then another time he wasn't sensitive and his brother gave him some sort of curse and he lost one of his children. But kids, it's just, it's interesting that Shmuel, the same person three times. So there's a machlaikis. How do we know this concept that we do mila today? Why? In that place. Like we had before. You don't need to come out to this kind of learning from Arla. 
You can't eat fruit for three years, and that's similar to, to, to Mila. Hareyu oimer v'orel zocher asheloyimol. Zocher, it says, a male. Loyimol, as b'sar alosoy. Mogam shenikyo b'in zachrus l'nakvus. It's that place that you can see what a zocher is in a nekeva. Torah abonon, choysim tila agabi or behema tohoyro v'agabi or chayi tohoyro. Yeah, you can write tefillin on, on deer skin. V'agabi or neveloy su treva shalem. So here comes the chiddush. You could write tefillin on a cow that dropped dead, or a cow, let's say, that you know is going to die that year. It has some sort of ailment that's going to die, and you shecht it anyways, but you're not allowed to eat it because it's a treva, but you're allowed to write tefillin on its skin, on the hide. That's a chiddush. V'nikrocha is b'saron. It's a major daft full of tefillin. Have this guy. It's parishes, in case you weren't familiar, you have to tie, or not so much a knot, but you have to put, some people hold it's even a knot, you have to tie a string around each parasha. Every parasha gets a string. So, where do you get the string from? V'nikrocha is b'saron from its own here. Animal here. V'nitfara is kosher animal here. V'nitfara is begidon. And when you sew the actual batten together, it's with the sinews of a kosher animal. And it's Allah Mishim Sinai, Shahat Filmi, Krochis Bissa, or in Vinit Faris Begidon. These two Allah is Allah Mishim Sinai. Avalain Koisvin, Loya Gabi or Behemoth Mea, Veloya Gabi or Chait Mea. You can't write Filin on a lion's skin and not on a, a PIG skin. You're not allowed to write Filin on that. Benit Sochloy Malgabi or Nevelo Trevishlam. And certainly not if the pig drops dead. That's poshet. That's uh, if you can't write it, if you shechted it, or uh, I don't know how that works. But okay, ben ikrochim b'sa'aron. Yeah, because even we said there's a, the goyim don't even eat animals that just drop dead. They like to shech. They like so. There's, there's something more mos about an animal that dies. Ben itfar is begidon, and certainly, and you can't use their their sinews and their hair. All that. V'zu she'el shal by toisi echod by toisi. We're very familiar with the tzdukis. But toisi is the the, the partner of the tzdukim, the, the two talmidim that went off the derech, one made this tzdukim and the other one went, but to, we, be, we don't really hear much about them. But anyways, one of these guys, this has Rabbi Shua Garsi. How do we even know this halacha? It has to be something that you could eat, and a pig is not something you eat, lines are not something you eat. If, it, if it's something that's mutter to eat, you can't eat a, a cow that dropped dead. So how could you write tefillin on a cow that died? I'll give you a mashal, and from the mashal you'll understand. Two people were supposed to die. The king himself, Achashverosh, comes and kills somebody. The, 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 the guy in charge of killing. The executioner, thank you. Iska plelit, yeah, is pakliter. Ezma meshubach. Who, who's more chashiv? The dead, two dead guys. Who's a more chashiv? A dead guy. Haviyoyim is a sharag melech. So too, who killed this animal? Hakadosh Baruch Hu killed this animal. Hakadosh Baruch Hu killed this cow, not a human being. So Mele has even more chashivas than an animal that, than a cow that a shaykh had killed. Is Rabbi Weisvishan probably somewhere? Says the Gemara, oh, it's so chashev, so eat a nevela, because Baruch Hu killed him. You're right, it should, but the Torah says, you can't overcome a positive from the Torah. Oh, ooh, great shot. I love it. Says the Mishnah. Now we're continuing on to other melachas. Ma'abed, tanning. Ain oisim hel me b'shabes. You can't make salt water on Shabbos. Avol oisu me melach. But you're allowed to make salt water on Shabbos. You hear the shaila? Ain oisim hel me. You can't make salt water on Shabbos. Avol oisu is me melach. You could make. So going to explain. In other words, you're allowed to make a little bit of salt water, a small amount. V'toyv ben pitoy. One of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life was in New York. They have that famous store, pomegranate. They were selling before Pesach, me melach, salt, ready-made salt water. If somebody doesn't want to take the salt and pour it in water, it's not much ready-made. You go to take the charoises, the salt water, you have everything. So, anyway, me melach. 
truth thing. Mei melech, v'toyva ben pitoy. Are you allowed to do... <laughs> no, no. The Kiddush was, it was only like six ninety nine. It was not much like a cheap, it was one of their cheapest items. So you're allowed to take it, dip your bread in it, and you're allowed to put it into your tafshil. Omer, you see. Valoyu, help me, be merub, be mu. The Gemara is going to explain what he's talking about here. There's no difference between a lot, a large amount, a small amount. The Gemara comes out in the Maskana that it's osur. Whether it's a small amount that's still osur, it's ma'abed. You're tanning, you're, you're, you're salting something. Just like, you know, one of the, one of the malachas of, when you have hide, one of the chemicals you put on is salt. So this is salting. Ve'eloin me melach hamutarim. And how do you do, how, what's the process of making salt water? It's not pashat. You need ingredients. Noisen shemen lechatchilo letoich hamayim letoich hamelach. The oil cannot come at the end. You need, because if, you, if the oil comes at the end, then you have really good salt water. It mixes up nicely with the water, water and salt. So either you put the oil in first, then you put the salt in the water, or you put the salt and then the oil. But kids are, but you cannot put the oil all the way at the end because then it's going to be really strong. Says Gemara, my Omar. Omar, what's going on here? Could you make salt water? You can't make salt water. So when you read the Mishnah, first words, Hey, noisim, hell me b'shavas. That's meruba. That's a large amount. Avalai says, may melech, you let it make a small quantity. What does that mean? That you could eat right now for the suda. Enough for the suda, says the Ran. Even Rashi is much more like that. Fine. Omar, we say, Avalai, you hell me be merubin be mu'atim. So, you're saying that you're allowed to make a small amount. Was he coming to say no? Even a small amount is usr? Or he's coming to say even a large amount is mutter? What he's trying to say is that everything is mutter. Now Rabbi Huda is going to go bye bye. Everybody's going to gang up at him and say no. The pshat is the opposite. His proof is from the fact that it doesn't say Rabbi Yossi, Asr is Mela. He's coming to be matter, even a large amount of salt. If you put the oil all the way in the beginning somewhere, then it's mutter. So it seems like Rabbi Yossi comes to Asr not to be matter. Yes, in fact, Rabbi Yossi says any amount, even a small amount, is also. Lesser, every amount. Rashi explains, you take a broken vessel. Why broken? Because that's the derech. If you want to pickle your vegetables, you're not going to waste your chashava kalim on it. You find some broken kli. But the point is, you're not allowed to make pickled vegetables on, on Shabbos. You're not allowed to add a lot of salt, salt water. You're allowed to do something very... Minor. Oh, now here's the raya. Comes Rabbi Yossi and says on this halacha that you're allowed to make a small amount. Other people are not going to see the distinction. And the end of the story, everybody holds, it seems like besides Rabbi Yudo, that Rabbi Yossi is coming to answer any amount. How do you do it? First you put in oil and salt, or oil and water. Don't put in the water and the, the water and the salt. And afterwards, put in the oil that is not good, because it will be a really strong salt water. Now I make the, the salt water very strong. What does that mean? Any type, any amount that an egg would float in them. When I come home today, it's going to be not a nice scene because I decided to do an experiment before share. So I took a cup of salt and I put it in, a, in one third water, two thirds salt, and I mixed it. And nothing was happening. It was just salt. So I, I was sitting there like this. I was trying to learn and mixing and mixing for 10 minutes. Nothing happened. So I figured it's probably because it's not hot. <laughs> I have to put it on the stove. <laughs> so I, 
I ran to the stove, I put it up, nothing happened. The water boiled out, it left a lot of salt. So I don't know if somebody knows how to do this kind of, uh, how, how do you do two-thirds salt, one-third, one uh, maybe Rabbi Shomer knows how to do it. Probably today's salt, you can't even do it, it has to be different salt, I don't know. I was just trying, I, I figured we have to do some show and tell, bring some salt and see if the egg floats. Himalayan. Could you do it for less than two-thirds, what? Himalayan salt. <coughs> Himalayan salt. What, that's what they had in uh, Bavl, you think? <coughs> That Himalayan salt and bubble. Okay. Huh? Oh, fi- we have to finish on time today. Yeah, it's Rish Chaydish. We have to finish on time every day. Therefore, I propose that we start to share at least the emails like three minutes earlier. Whoever doesn't want to listen, great. Besides, whatever. The people on- online could listen. Uh, what? <coughs> but doesn't Shachar end like se- uh, seven-ish? Whatever. No, not on Rish Chaydish. Re- Omer Abo! So, Lamai, Lamai Avdala, what do you do? What do you do with the salt water? Why do you need such a thick uh, concoction? Omer Abavo, Lumuryasa, to make fish brine. What do you do with fish brine, Rabbi Say? No. Very good, Laivi. Laivi, Laivi, that's what I was talking about. You throw it on your shifcha. No, when you get mad, you have to throw it on your shifcha. Tony Rabbi Huda, Barchaviva, a Machim Tsnainu, Beit of Shabbos. That's why we have a younger man in our share. What happened to that other Koyal guy? We have to get him. All right. You know the guy on the bike? You know, you know what I'm talking about. Hey, Malchim, it's not even a base of a Shabbos. You're not allowed to salt up a radish and an egg on Shabbos. Says Rashi. If you look at Rashi, we don't have time. But Rashi says, Gimel va'arba chaticho yisyacha. Three or four pieces. Rav Chizkiyo, Mishmeda, Bayoma, it's not even osur. Only a radish is osur. Beitzim uteres. It's not so good for the egg. So, Mela, it's motor. Omar Rav Nachman. Mirej, in the beginning, I have a Malach in Pugla. I used to salt my radishes. I mean, I've sued come I've seen It's not very good for them. Domar Shmuel, Pugla, Churfei Mali. It's much better when they're nice and sharp. Putting the salt ruins it. It's not a big problem. It's not tanning. It's the opposite of tanning. You're, you're, you're ruining it. That's not a malacha. In the Shemana Laha, the Chiyasa Ula, maybe Marova, in our Israel, Malchik, Kishri, Kishri, they would salt piles of these radishes. I wouldn't salt it. Says Rashi, what does it mean salting? Shtayim Yachat. So we have to understand how come over here Rashi says two. And before Rashi said three or four. Tabuli vadim in but I definitely would dip my radish into the salt. I wouldn't salt it, but I would dip it into salt. Tony Rabbi Yudabar Chaviva, Esroig, Tznoinu Beitza. These three things an Esroig, radish, and an egg. Il Malik Liposan Achitsoina, without their outer shell, meaning an Esroig shell, a radish uh, peel. Egg is referring to the egg white, not the peel, Chasashon, because you don't eat an egg with a peel. If you didn't have these three things, then it wouldn't be dig- it wouldn't, the body wouldn't digest it well. So you need an egg white in order for the body to digest the yolk better. No one has ever drowned in Yam HaMelech. It seems like what he's trying to say is that wood dr- does... People don't drown, they don't... They don't sink, but wood does sink. That's how he understood him saying, No, that's not what he meant. A piece of wood, it never sinks in any water. A person drowns and sinks in regular water. That's what he meant to say, that he's not going to sink in Zdoim. Who cares whether Zdoim is very salty, people can't drown? What ramification does it have on Hilcha Shabbos? Kiha says the Gemara, the Rav and Abishokov, Ozachor, the Rebirmio, they were walking Aguda the Yam and on the bank of Yama Melech, Omer Lei, Maole Mimshe, Mahanemai Bishabbos. So we have the famous problem of doing Rufu on Shabbos, Shrika Samamanim. People are going to think that you could grind on Shabbos, so could you wash your hands with Yama Melech water? Is it considered a Rufu? People do it, right? They, they wash their body with the stuff. It's very healthy. Omele, shaper domi. Yeah, it's not a problem. Why? Because it, when it comes to shrika samamanim, it's very dependent on what other people are going to view it and what other people are going to think. Says the Gemara, ma'ul meimatz v'lemiftach. Ooh, this is very painful even to describe it. But it's, what if, can you put the stuff in your eyes? It's like the most painful. I don't know if you ever went to Yom Melech. If a little bit of stuff gets in your eye, it's all over. Game over. Could you put it in your eye and blink open and close your eyes? Like a refuah. 
I guess if it's necessary, this person has a cataract, and this is the, the refu, you do it. So, this might be a refu. People might see, look. Akhoponim, you see from here, the Gemara is trying to describe the, the salinity of this water for refu and Shabbos. So it's an afkamina. That's the afkamina that we're talking about. Kayagzaba, Shamati, I heard something similar. Tomer Vizera, Zimna, Rav Mishmeda, Rav Masna, Vizimna, Rav Mishmeda, Rav Mar Ukva. Vitar Vayu, Mishmeda, Vuda, Shmuel. They both heard this. This is important, this Nakuda. They heard it from Shmuel's father and somebody else, Levi. So they either heard it from Shmuel's father or from Levi. Chad Omar, they both said one Allah, we don't know which one said what. Chad Omar, Yayin, Betoycha, Ayin, Osir, it's considered medicine to put wine inside an eye. Agava ayin, but on the eyelid, on top of the eye, mutter. The chadomar, roik tofel, spittle. That's from a fasting person. Afilu agava ayin osur. Look in the art scroll. He says, this spit from a fasting person has potassium, some cyanide, something gewaldic stuff. It's very, very healthy. Agava ayin osur. I'm saying like a guy wrote a book about refuas from the, and he says this is, is that it actually has a higher level of these chemicals when it's nice and fresh in the morning. I'll prove it to you that Shmuel's father said this halacha, not that halacha. He was talking about the wine one. Why? If Shmuel said a halacha, where did he get it from? He most likely got it from his own father. A person could have bread soaked in wine and put it on, the, on his eye like a compress. People are not going to be choshish and that's Oh, If he's saying halacha about wine in the eye, he probably heard it from his father. Let's say that's the halacha he heard from his father. The problem is, but Shmuel also said halacha about spit. You're not going to put it on top of your eye, even on the eyelid. So again, you're going to tell me that he heard it from who? He probably heard it from his father, no? But if he heard it from his father, then both halachas came from his father, and neither of the halachas came from Levi. That can't be. Levi didn't say any of them. Rather, we don't know which one. One wine and the spit, one of them is from his father, one of them is from Levi. Now this is a very, very important halacha of Hilchah Shabbos. It comes like four words, and if you don't stop for a second, you might not notice that there's a very important yisait here. You can take this kiloyrin, which is a paste, that you put on your eye, it's brought throughout Shabbos, this thing, they used to put it on their eye, some paste on their eye, did something for their eye. You're not allowed to do it on Shabbos. However, if you soak it before Shabbos in water, that's okay. Why? It looks, it has this red color, people are going to think it's white. The point is, it doesn't look like Shrika Samamana. So, Mimela, what? A lot of halachas are based on this. Let's say you want to take that, uh, that pill, a fasting pill, easy fast, whatever it is. You want to take Tylenol. If you dissolve it in water before Shabbos, and you, that's not a problem. You're allowed to drink it on Shabbos. This is where they get it from, this line right over here. Shoyer Adam Kilorim of Shabbos, if you do this before Shabbos, and it just looks like regular water, looks like wine, whatever, that's not a problem. The problem is doing it on Shabbos. And he sees him blinking his eye. He put it on his eye and he started blinking. This Kilorim. Omelei, Kulei Vadei Loi Shara Marshmuel. That mamish looks like refuah. People see you blinking, that automatically turns it in to refuah. Please send me some of your special kiloyrin. So he sent him back. I will send you, don't worry, it's coming in the mail. Why? I don't want people to say that I'm stingy. So, tsar ainano. What does that mean? It's, it's not a good thing when people talk about you. They shouldn't say you're stingy. For whatever reason, I'm not going to say why. Only Menachem knows I started singing this song in the middle of the Bismarck yesterday. Like I said 20 times. Whatever reason, 
You don't need to come on to my special kilayr. All you need to do is wash your eyes out with cold water in the morning, and then your hands and your feet with hot water in the evening, and that does the same job as kilayr. Have a wonderful chaydash, have a wonderful day. Not a kosher fire, right? How can you write thrilling on the on the skin of a dog? Dog.